Immanuel Kant was a German philosopher and also one of the most influential thinkers in the history of Western philosophy. His philosophy is called Transcendental Idealism, stating that the things we see in the world are only appearances, that the true nature of things are not knowable to us, but we can come closer to their true essence through our capacity of reasoning. He believed that reason is the true source of morality. Kant contributed immensely to the fields of epistemology, metaphysics, ethics, and aesthetics. He was also an advocate of the idea of global peace and believed that it can be achieved by universal democracy and international cooperation. He perceived time in an unusual way in respect to how he organized his life. He was born in the 18th century and was raised in a religious family. His education was very strict and disciplinary. As a result, his life was characterized by an exceptional discipline. Kant was a man of stable routine, following the same schedule every day, which led to extraordinary results. He wrote important books and essays like Critique of Pure Reason, Metaphysics of Morals, Critique of Judgment, Critique of Practical Reason, Answering the Question What is Enlightenment, and Perpetual Peace, a Philosophical Sketch. All of them still relevant today, and in spite of his strict schedule, he had a rich social life. It seemed that his method of managing his time had great results. He was very productive to the end of his long life. So with that in mind, we bring you seven lessons on time management that we can learn from the philosophy of Immanuel Kant. Number one, organize yourself. Kant says, Science is organized knowledge. Wisdom is organized life. Immanuel Kant was a very unusual human being. He got up every day at 5 a.m., having a domestic helper in charge of making sure he never gets up even half an hour late. After getting up, Kant would drink one or two cups of weak tea, smoking a pipe full of tobacco, and meditating on his life. Then his lectures began at 7 and they would last until 11. With the lectures finished, he worked again on his writings until lunch. After lunch, he went out for a walk, then he spent his afternoons with his good friend Green. Afterwards, he went home and spent some time working and reading before going to sleep again around 11 p.m. Kant claimed that a life without a daily routine or structure will drain you mentally, physically, and emotionally and therefore, you need to organize your life in the best possible way for you. The best way to start organizing your life is to think about your long-term goals and set some routines which can help you achieve those goals. Thus, it's very important to organize your life according to your long-term goals, because in this way, you can prioritize your activities and allocate more time to those activities that really matter for you in the long run. Good time management would help you concentrate on the important things and achieve your long-term goals. Kant's goals were to write books that can transform humanity, and that's why he spent his days writing, reading, and teaching, as well as getting inputs from like-minded people of great intellect. If you don't set up at least some routines, life will just happen to you, and you'll end up working for other people's goals in life. Routines can really help you achieve your goals and for that you need a significant amount of patience. The greatest awards are given to people who are persistent in their journey and don't give up. For example, if you set yourself a goal to be a famous violinist in a big orchestra, you should choose a job that allows you to spend time developing your musical skills, like being a violin teacher, as well as daily practice, spending time studying the masters, seeing them in concert if at all possible, and networking with fellow musicians in groups online as well as in the bar at concerts and industry events like conferences. All of these may help you get better gigs as a musician or at the very least will help you improve and keep improving. In general, spending time practicing your craft and networking will help you achieve the required skills for your dream job as well as find the right connections to get it. As the old saying goes, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Number two, follow through. Kant tells us, 
Man must be disciplined, for he is by nature raw and wild. Kant not only organized his life into sets of routines, but he also followed through. Being raised in a strict and very religious family with fixed rules for everything, since he was a child, he learned what it meant to have discipline and to do what you intend to do. His actions in life followed a severe schedule. It was said that neighbors would set their clocks by his daily walks. He was a man of iron discipline. After recognizing your most important goals and priorities, you need to show up every day and follow through with your plans. It is said that half of success in life is showing up, meaning doing what you intend to do after deciding on your goals. Although we may never reach his level of discipline, we can all try to incorporate a little bit of Kanchen discipline into our own lives, especially in our professional ones. For example, if you're working remotely online, like me, you may find it very difficult to be disciplined. It's sometimes harder to create and follow a daily schedule when you don't have a boss to tell you what you have to do. In this case, you need to fight your urge to procrastinate and learn how to motivate yourself to make progress in your work. To put it more simply, you need to parent yourself. Imagine that you're a rider on an elephant. The elephant being your raw and wild nature who doesn't like to follow routines. It's lazy and rebellious. You need to learn to be gentle and tough at the same time to be in control. You have to motivate your elephant to carry you to your desired goal. The best motivation technique is to reward your elephant every time he does what you requested of him. For a more realistic example, when it comes to scheduling your workload in your job to maximize motivation and minimize procrastination, you can divide your day into different tasks. From the most difficult, important task at hand to the least important, most trivial, and start with your most important, difficult task. If you start with completing your most important, difficult task, a task that you will most likely procrastinate on, you go about your day knowing you've done it, and the rest of your day will feel a lot easier in comparison. Your elephant will be motivated to work at the beginning of the day because he'll think of what a relaxing evening he can have at the end of it. Furthermore, as we learned from our imaginary elephant before, you should reward yourself after finishing each task. It can be reading a chapter of your favorite book, watching an episode of your favorite TV series, eating a cookie, going for a walk, and so on. In time, you'll notice that it gets easier and easier to follow the routines and you'll start to feel more energetic and eager to continue working. Number three, follow universal principles in your daily activities. To quote Kant, so act that your principle of action might safely be made a law for the whole world. Kant believed that we as rational beings have the power of will to choose our actions according to our life principles, and our principles can be deduced through reasoning. Instead of following our instincts, our emotions like animals do, we should use our ability as human beings to reason, to decide on what is good to do and what is not, to find our life principles and then, based on these principles, we can exercise our will to do the right action. For that, we need to formulate our imperatives, the commands of reason which we should follow in daily life. Kant also advises that we should act such that our principles of action can be a law for the whole world. In other words, the more universal our principles which guide our lives, the more rational decisions we'll make and the better our lives will be. Regarding time management, if we want to apply this Kantian advice, we need to manage our time in such a way that our style of time management can be used as a law for the entire world. For example, through reasoning, we can reach the conclusion that doing daily exercise and eating a lot of fruit and vegetables is very good for our health. Similarly, through reasoning, we can fight our impulses that make us procrastinate, that make us watch a cat video on YouTube instead of finishing the report. In our modern world, we spend a lot of unproductive time at work. Some studies showed that an average employee is productive for only 2 hours and 53 minutes per day. 
The rest of the time they're preparing, discussing or feeling anxious about their work, not actually doing anything. Add to that time wasted in meetings, chatting with colleagues and on social media. So next time you have an urge to waste your time doing something you're not supposed to do, use your reasoning skills and ask yourself, is this necessary? What is the maxim of my action? What if everyone followed this rule? For example, if you're planning to scroll through social media instead of working on a report that's due today, then you must follow the rule that everybody should be entitled to do the same, in this case scrolling through their social media instead of working. Then you need to reflect if that would lead to a better society. Obviously, this reasoning will lead you to contradictions in this case. Moral actions cannot bring about moral contradictions. In this model, if you're trying to steal something from a shop, the owner of the shop would have the right to steal something from you too. Therefore, stealing is not universalizable. You're not allowed to make an exception for yourself in the Kenshin world. Similarly, if you decide to waste your time instead of work, then you should accept the fact that everyone is allowed to waste their time. If the entire company that you work for or own can just choose not to work, it will eventually go bankrupt. Realizing that this is not what you want, you need to change your attitude and put more effort into your work instead of focusing on distractions that will only give you short-term gratification. It's important to follow a set of universal laws in everything you do, like doing your best in your work, because in theory, if everybody applied these laws, the world would be a better place. Number 4. Schedule time for developing your skills. Kant teaches us, We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. Kant lived a rather predictable life. He was not that much interested in acquiring possessions. What he was interested in was designing a perfect way of life to accomplish his goals in the realm of philosophy, and that's why he had such a strict schedule every day. He understood that people sometimes fight very hard to acquire wealth, higher social status, a promotion, and so on. But all these accomplishments can vanish one day. One business decision can lead to a catastrophe. One email can destroy your entire reputation. Your boss could fire you tomorrow, and so on. As such, it is not wise to build houses of cards, but instead to keep developing your skills, to keep learning about your field, keeping yourself informed about the news in your industry. Instead of working hard on sucking up to your boss and highlighting your colleagues' mistakes just to put yourself in a better light, you should work hard on learning more about the tools, processes and software you have to use, about the customers you'll need to approach and so on. Keep yourself away from the pursuit of promotions, bigger salaries and bigger social status and stay focused on your craft. Invest an hour a day every day after work to learn more about your field, to develop a skill you don't have in order to improve yourself. Putting more time in your calendar for upgrading yourself can enhance your career a great deal in the long run. Number 5. Make time for the small things. In the words of Kant, look closely, the beautiful may be small. In spite of his rigid way of living and of his cold, rational way of conducting philosophy, Kant understood the importance of the small things in life like talking to friends, walking in the park, and enjoying social activities, and he made room for all of those in his life. He also had a great interest in the world of aesthetics, even claiming that our ability to reason is the reason we can appreciate all the beauty of this world. Kant believed there are similarities between moral judgment and aesthetic judgment, that the physical and the moral universe can be unified. The more we know how to appreciate the beauty of a forest, for example, the more we'll be inclined to make the moral decision to take care of the forest, and in this way, our actions will benefit the environment, and thus, the local community. The admiration for beautiful things inspires a feeling of awe, accompanied sometimes by a desire to take care of those things and to treasure them. It's important to allocate time to appreciate the beauty that surrounds us. A sunrise or sunset, 
The flowers and trees, the distant landscape, even the architecture. There is a world of beauty in most cities if we just spent more time looking up, above the shops. If not every day, then we should try and do this for at least a few hours a week. Take time to visit a museum or gallery. Contemplating a piece of art or a beautiful corner of nature soothes our soul and brings out the desire in us to be kinder and more appreciative for having the opportunity to live on this magnificent planet. Number 6. Make time for your other duties. As we learn from Kant, an action to have moral worth must be done from duty. Nowadays, we often admire people who are genuinely good and do good things because they feel like doing them. However, Kant would say that this is not enough. For him, an action is only morally good if the motivating forces behind the decision to make that action are also good. It is not enough to be good at heart and kind to people. You need to have a solid rational reason for doing what you're doing. For example, in the case of a waiter at a restaurant, they shouldn't be kind to their customers just because they feel that way. They should be kind because it's their duty to be kind with their customers. If they only do what they feel like doing, imagine how they'd behave with the customers when they have a bad day. Only doing good things when you feel like doing them is effectively immoral in Kant's view. We need to act following a set of principles of conduct not only in our work life, but also in our personal life. We all have to play different roles in life, an employee, a spouse, a friend or parent. Therefore, there are many different types of duties, and to keep everything in balance, we need to find time to meet our duties. Not fulfilling our duties in one area of life can affect the others as well. For example, most of us understand how important it is to be in contact with our parents or other relatives, to call them and ask how they are, if they need something, and so on. But if you get carried away by your work, you're too stressed to call them or you just plain forget, it means you only do things when you feel like doing them. And this is not moral. If you truly reasoned through the importance of being in contact with your parents, you'd call them no matter how you feel at that moment. Not managing such duties correctly can lead to guilt and regret down the road, particularly once your parents are gone. No matter how important one area of your life is, in this example your work, you need to find time to fulfill your duties in other areas as well, like family in this case. Number 7. Make time for moral self-development. In our final quote from Kant for this video, he says, Without man and his potential for moral progress, the whole of reality would be a mere wilderness, a thing in vain and have no final purpose. Kant was one of the most influential philosophers in the Age of Enlightenment, also called the Age of Reason. And in his work, the concept of being a moral human being played an important role. He considered that there are three main questions we should all ask ourselves. What can I know? What should I do? And what can I hope for? He argued that human beings should always try to make progress in the realm of morality, that universal peace is possible through collaboration and understanding of each other, that the life of any human being is sacred, and that animals must be respected. Nowadays, due to globalization, finding a common ground for morality across so many different countries and cultures is a particularly challenging task. What is considered good in one country can be seen as bad or even offensive in another. For example, when it comes to approaches to problem solving, the way people contradict and debate with each other to find the best solution in typical Western cultures versus the more traditional hierarchical structure of many countries in Southeast Asia. Both methods are valid, but can clash when brought together. The only way in which progress can be done in this regard is through continuous dialogue and honest, open communication. Finding common ground is difficult, but it is always worth it. Facing other cultures or other people with very different personalities can raise new questions in us, and they can force us to update our moral code, which makes room for more appreciation of different ideologies. To evolve in a moral sense, we need to be receptive to other cultures, 
to communicate and debate with other people in order to reach the best solution. To evolve on a moral level, we need to get informed, perhaps spend some time each week, an hour or two at least, to learn about other cultures through reading articles and watching documentaries, or meeting with a friend from another culture, asking them essential questions to help you understand the way they see the world. You could also watch debates on YouTube, philosophical discussions on morality and the like. By learning and debating, you'll reach a new understanding of what is moral and what is not, helping you to truly know yourself and shape the principles you should follow for a truly happier life. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our full Philosophies for Life playlist and for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.